Hi, I'm Mark, coming to you from Baker's Green Acres. Trying to get back to doing my daily update here on questions. I got a really good question from a guy that I've been on Facebook with now for quite a while. His name's Brooke Olin. He's uh, in Cape Breton, Nova Scotia, right? So, uh, you know, uh, I think a lot of us farmers just like to look at the pictures of other people's farms and it... You know, we're in farming because we love it, and uh, so it's it's fun to look at other people's operations and, and hear what they have to say about what goes on with them. So this is a guy that wrote a long letter to us, and it's about the pig issue, and I think I want to, I think I want to read this. Um, okay. I know you're busy, except, but I need a bit of clarification. I've been promoting your cause, have sent a bit of money, and other people have contacted me about sending me, me money to forward to you and asking questions. Someone that I'm Facebook friends with, but don't really know any more than I know you, but connected with him because he raises Highland cattle in Berkshires as I do. Jim Schneider of Edmore, Michigan, said that the pigs you raise are a real problem in that state. And I do see yours specifically are not. I think he works as a soil specialist or something for the Department of Ag. I was surprised by his comment because I thought him to be more of a patriot and libertarian that would support your case. But he commented rather than remain silent on one of your videos that I posted on my page. So I must ask, uh, is the DNR concerned simply about the risk of potential invasive species? Is it only, uh, is it only the risk of these pigs becoming feral that concerns them? Do you need some kind of special permit to raise them as you would in Nova Scotia to raise European red deer or bison? Uh, are they concerned that the people you sell live pigs to are going to let them escape? I'm very much on your side, just needing a bit of clarification. The whole thing scares the bleep out of me, not just the threat of changing rules, but the fact that most people don't understand the long-term implications of it. Most people have no idea how bad it would be for our food to be completely under the control of corporations. They have no idea of the importance of food and how it arrives at their tables as long as it does. They don't see the trap. They don't see the trap at all. They don't see the connection between small family farms and healthy, robust economies. And then there's some other stuff here that's more personal and it's just to me and it doesn't pertain to what the questions are. But the questions are, is the DNR concerned simply about the risk of potential invasive species? Well, I don't think they've ever come right out and said what their concern is. Um, in my last video, I explained the numbers that they give as far as what they say exists as of 2008 in feral animals. Um, again, Brooke, you know I, I don't have feral animals. Uh, these are all domesticated animals and uh, if they were to get out of my fences they they would be at, up at the house begging for food. They, they wouldn't take to the woods because there's not, there's not a lot for them to eat in the woods. I think they might go out and poke around for a little while but they'd be back. They know where their beds are and a lot of these sows uh, have been with us a long time. Um, and if we sell these baby pigs to people, you know, they, they pay quite a bit of money for them, and I don't think they're going to just let them get away. Um, so I don't think the DNR is concerned about that. Actually, what is going on here is the DNR has been detailed by Industrial Ag to um, get family farmers to be discouraged about hog production. Because they would like to see all hog production done on an industrial scale. The DNR was detailed to do this. They screwed it up, and now they've pushed it down on the on the uh, attorney generals to do it. And everybody's sullying their career over it. And it's pretty stupid. Uh, let's see. No, I don't have to have any permits to do this, and I would never even I would never concede to that. It's a farm animal. If I have to start getting permits to farm animals, there's something wrong. Uh, the risk of these pigs becoming feral 
is no different than any other pig becoming feral. If a, an animal is abandoned or somehow escapes into the woods, be, they become feral out of necessity in order to survive. Brooke, I know you know that. And so, um, as a farmer, it's in my best interest to make sure that my animals stay on my farm because I, I raise them to sell them so that I can get money to make my bills and all that stuff. So um, that's what I have to say about that. Thanks for calling in and asking about it. Um, that's about it. Oh, so Jim Schneider, Jim Schneider, Edmore, Michigan, he said that the pigs are a real problem in the state. I'd like to hear from you, Jim. Um, and I'd like you to uh, put some pictures where your mouth is there because, uh, you know, the state hasn't come out with any of the pictures of the supposed animals that were killed in 2012 when they shoot on site. So, if Jim, if you're going to say this on the Internet, I hope you can back up what you're saying. I've spoken to several very large crowds here in Michigan um, about this and many, many, many more crowds outside of the state about this and I always ask has anybody seen a feral pig and I never see a single hand up now Jim I want you to think about this a little bit a pig is an omnivore just like you are an omnivore if a pig found or smelled rotting meat that pig would follow that smell right to that right now Jim I'm sure you've seen dead deer laying on the side of the road. I'm sure you have, Jim. If you live in Michigan, you have. Any day of the week, you can go out and see dead deer that are hit by cars. Uh, matter of fact, I have the numbers on the number of collisions, uh, deer car collisions. I got this from a uh, state farm guy. And in 2012, there was 56,000 car deer crashes. And those are the ones that are reported. I mean, I I would reckon if I hit a deer, the last thing I would do would, whoops, would be to call somebody to come out and, I don't know, I don't, I don't reckon I would if I, but, um, so probably a lot of people don't, but Jim, uh, that means there's a lot of dead deer on the, on the side of the road and pigs love rotten meat, right? So if there were the number of pigs, uh, by DNR's numbers, in 2012, there would have been four, four million pigs running around the state. Um, you would not pass a dead deer on the side of the road that didn't have 20 or 30 pigs on it, just tearing it to shreds. And, and if that was going on, Jim, we would have a problem. We would have a problem. Now, if someone pigs, someone's pig gets out of a pen, like down in Cass County, there's a lot of people raising pigs out on dirt. If their pigs get out and they get in a farmer's field, <laughs> that's tough. That's life. Bro, that is life. That is farming. All right. We have a woman that's crossed the highway here. Her horses got out. Somebody hit one of them. That doesn't mean we're going to do away with all horses on farms. That happens. All right. That's farming. And, and you got to get a grip, Jim. So before you go saying stuff like this on the Internet, maybe you ought to think about the truth of it all. So, Brooke, I hope, uh, I hope that helps you. And uh, if I can be of any more help, please let me know. Mark signing off from Baker's Green Acres.